The last thing you want is for something to go wrong with your plumbing, but it happens a lot. And the last thing you want when there's water spraying all over your kitchen or your toilet is overflowing is looking up reviews on which plumber you should call. So let me save you some time. Call the art of plumbing. They're always on time. They can locate the problem and fix it right away. They even help with solutions to stop any future problems. Save time. Call the art of plumbing today. 541-951-9405. Thank you so much for joining us on Other People's Shoes. Of course, I am your host, Neil Matthews. I am so excited to get a chance to talk to our next guest. He is, if you saw him on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those things that he's on, and you'll find out how you can follow him on those social platforms coming up next. But before we get to that, I got to tell you, if you saw this guy face to face, you would think you were staring at a Tom Hanks lookalike from Forrest Gump. What do I mean by that? Well, I guess you're going to just have to stay tuned to find out what that's all about. I hope you're ready because you know I am. Make sure your tray tables are in the upright position, seatbelt strapped, because we're going across the pond on other people's shoes. Stay tuned next. Hey, come take a walk with me. Not like you used to do something different. Put yourself in other people's shoes. Open up your mind and open up your eyes. Welcome in to Other People's Shoes. I'm your host, Neil Matthews. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm a little under the weather. You're probably going to hear that at the time of this recording. So apologize in advance. We're going to try to work through it, persevere through. But you got to help me welcome in my guest today. Uh, all the way across the pond, I am so excited because I've never, ever gotten to talk to anybody from the great country of the United Kingdom. And my guest today comes to us from the United Kingdom, but you gotta hear about this guy. So first off, he just felt like running. He's the first person ever to complete the whole Forrest Gump run. That's 15,000 plus miles, 600 marathons, four times across our great state, or our great country really, of the United States. Uh, my guest, Rob Pope. Rob, how are you? I'm very good, mate. I'm, I'm sounding better than you are at the moment, mate. I hope you feel better soon. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, Rob, I got to tell you, so so here's a little background on, on how we met, because I always like to tell people kind of the background on the, the story of how we met. So I'm in Coos Bay, Oregon, and you're there, and I don't even know <laughs> that you're there. But you're there, you're, you're on your journey, you know, across the United States, and you are on Facebook, and you, there's a picture of you next to a Oregon State uh, patrol car. I think you were on Highway 101, probably near Brookings area, and my father-in-law, uh, so shout out to Tim, um, posts this picture of you. Uh, next to the, you know, the Oregon State uh, patrol car. And he goes, hey, look at this guy. You need to find out about this guy. And this is way before I'm even thinking about podcasting. This is way before I'm even thinking about anything. And I'm like, that's a cool story. Kind of crazy running across the United States. Wow. You know, that guy's really awesome. I'd really like to meet him, kind of hear his story. I wonder, I wonder if I'll ever get to meet him. And I'm literally thinking this thought as I'm walking down the street getting ready to run the pair or uh, the prefontaine and lo and behold i bump into this transient looking fella with an <laughs> orange shirt on beard like nobody's business and i'm thinking wait a minute you're you're that guy you're that guy that's running across the united states and you we had some pleasantries and you were super nice and we took a picture together i'm grateful for that picture especially when we talk about the podcast today because we're able to now use that in our uh, promotions of this episode so you'll see that uh available to you but uh but rob that's how we met by the way you ran that race i, I don't know if you know this or not because because you know most runners are time nuts but you ran that race in uh 33 minutes uh, 53 seconds, pretty slow for you, I'm sure. Uh, that's about a 528 <laughs> pace, in case you're wondering. Yours truly, I, I included my time in this as well. I ran it in an hour and five minutes and 16 <laughs> seconds, which is about a 1031 pace. So for one of my miles, you're doing two of those, essentially. It was, it was hilly, though, man, and I'm only little. <laughs> <laughs> How tall are you? 
Uh, uh, five seven. Okay, I got you guys you. still go on that measurements, don't you? That's about one seven one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, we're, we're we're five seven over here on the on the uh, on the other cool. side of the ocean. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, and it is a hilly course. Uh, I'm I, I love that course so much uh, for that reason. But but Rob, we we got to get the most important question you'll probably answer on our show today, and that's this: is uh, what size shoe do you wear? Uh, I'm US nine. You're a US nine. Okay. Yeah. What, what does that translate to uh, over in your country? We're an eight. I, don't, I just don't understand where the calculations <laughs> come from. The, the measurements are all crazy. We'll, we'll get somebody uh, from, uh, what is it? What, what is that That place, Garrett? Help me out. What's that place out there? The, the math people, the nerdy people? You know what I'm talking? No uh, MIT. Oh. The MIT. <laughs> we'll get MIT on that. So, uh, Rob, uh, I'm curious, as a fellow, fellow runner myself, how many pairs of shoes do you have? Uh, wow, <laughs> everything's sort of all, all mixed up now because I still have some left from the run that I'm basically just getting the miles out of. So normally, if I was running, I'd probably have a, a couple of road pair shoes, a couple of trail. Let's just say, I don't know, I'd probably lurk around the 10, ten or so. <laughs> okay, so you're not quite as Too bad many. as... You're not quite as bad as I am. I am shamefully admitting, again, I'm upwards of 50, so... Uh. I, I don't get rid of my old ones, so if I count the ones I used on the run, there's there's a real question for you. You know, so yeah. that, uh, if I count the ones I used on the run, then I'm then I'm certainly beating your total. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So if we're counting all of them, every pair you own, every pair you've run in, how many are we talking about? Uh, well, on the run, I got through thirty three pairs of shoes, and I, like, when pairs. I say got through, I killed thirty three pairs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a lot. Okay. All right, so yeah. we'll jump into and this. Of them, I, I still own thirty two and a half pairs. Okay. Um, I lost um, I lost one of the pairs somewhere in uh, in Delaware, and uh, even though I went back to try and find it, man, black shoe is somewhere out there in the wild running free. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So uh, I know it's fun to say, right? I just felt like running. I mean, that, yeah. that, that really is fun to say, and I know you've said it in a couple of interviews that I've watched with you. Yeah. But, but, but what's the real reason, man? I mean, I, again, I know it sounds good in theory, but, but what's the real reason? What's the real reason you woke up one morning and was like, you know what, I'm going to do this? Yeah, so, if, well, well, counting backwards almost from towards the end of the run, um, I run across the bridge the forest runs across in um, in the movie. And they say he's running across the Mississippi for the fourth time. Well, that was actually about a 1,000 miles after I'd run across the Mississippi for the fourth time because that bridge and that river is actually in Beaufort in South Carolina. It's over the Harbor River, not the Mississippi, and that's where... The uh, the reporters uh, say, you know, w- you know, why are you doing this? And they say, are you running for women's rights, for the homeless, for world peace, for the environment, and for animals? And so, I was running for two charities, um, which are the World Wildlife Fund uh, for Nature and also Peace Direct. And between those two charities, they will cover all of those bases, which I think is pretty cool for two charities to do all them things. And so this is going back way further than this. You know, Steve, I'd wanted to run across America for a long time. I, I read a book by a British guy called Nick Baldock. Um, sort of, uh, you can still find his book online, and it's really, really good. I'd recommend it to any of your listeners. Um, and the way he sort of portrayed America, especially as a Brit, you know, because he made talk about these things in more romantic terms than one of you guys would you know say i'm from liverpool and i only went to the beatles museum for the first time two years ago because it's there you know why would you do it in your hometown it's you know it's much more exciting when you're a tourist and um i'd had this wish to run across america for about 15 years and it never really got off the ground and so eventually circumstances came that it, it could get off the ground And if you're going to do something like that, you may as well do it for charity. And if you're doing it for charity, it should be as big and exciting as possible to, um, you know, get people to buy into it. Uh, I obviously run across America is a pretty big thing. Um, So big, you know, only about 300 people have ever done it. But then when you consider about 7,000 people have climbed Everest, it's, you know, so it makes you think it's a small club, but it's still not unique. There's still 300. And so, I was trying to find something that had been done before and not been done before. And so, you know, you could try for the record, but that's always 
a bit of a gamble and as you can probably tell by the fact I like to ramble on, you know, so I wanted to speak to people and meet people and see the sights. So that wasn't for me. Um, you know, specific routes would people buy into a specific route? I don't know. You know, maybe if there was a Liverpool on one coast and a Liverpool on the other, but there isn't. Um, but if you ask, actually ask people in the Midwest, um, I did a little survey asking people who uh, to name a famous long distance runner. And I came up with some cool answers. Obviously, we've already uh, touched on uh, Pre, you know, so a few people mentioned him. Uh, but like uh, Barack and Oprah Winfrey were getting as many mentions as uh, anybody who you've ever heard of on the track. Uh, but the name Oprah that Winfrey up... getting more mentions yes. than 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 Ex other people on the track? Are you kidding? Ex not, not not a single person said Meb, you know. And so uh, I was like sort of in a pretty rural area, you know. So. Um, uh, but yeah, Oprah and Barack. Uh, so Bill Clinton, he liked to run, didn't he? You know, and so uh, for, for no, numerous reasons. Um, and so, yeah, basically the answer that cropped up more than anyone else was uh, Forrest, you know, Forrest Gump. And so, yeah, he's the most famous long distance runner ever. And I, you know, I'd seen the film, I'd seen the run. And I thought, oh, that's some pretty cool scenery he goes through. And I'd looked up the route you know years and years ago and saw where it was possible and people have uh, written articles about whether it'd be possible whether he would even survive it and it just sort of dawned on me that this could be the uh, this could be the big thing to do and so yeah did my research and uh, I thought well that would be good for these charities and it might be able to fulfill what is possibly the most underlying reason of all of it, which is uh, when my mum said, and she's not around anymore, unfortunately, but she said, do one thing in your life that makes a difference. And uh, and that was it. <laughs> I, I got to be honest, that was, the, that was the quote that resonated with me when I saw one of your interviews is that quote from your mom. Say that again, please, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, well, so I'm glad I mentioned it first time round. <laughs> Proved it's true. Yeah. Um, so no, it did she's... because that again, that's what really resonated with me in getting ready for today is hearing this quote from your mom. Yeah, like sort of, uh, she was she's pretty cool, finger on the pulse and all that. You know, she said, uh, "Do do one thing in your life that makes a difference." Yeah. And she didn't she didn't elaborate on it. It was a very open ended thing. It was very Yoda esque. Yeah. And, um, you know, so, I, yeah, I'd done a couple of things in my life that I thought were good. You know, try to be nice to people. You know, that makes a difference, you know. Buying someone a coffee, you know, sort of who's on the street, you know, that could make a big difference to them. But, you know, in the big scheme of things, it's always nice to have something that, you know, resonates and might even make other people make a difference. So, um, it, you know, I thought, let, let's go big. <laughs> go big or go uh, home, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go big, then go home. Go big, then go home. That's true. Yeah. So, uh, how how much training and running did you do before you started the the journey across the United States? Were Were you a pretty big yeah. big runner or no? Uh, in, in sort of like sort of a high school, I was. You know, so when I say big, you know, I was, a, you know, county level uh, runner, and like so that's probably similar to your, you know, county levels over here. You know, sort of, um, you know, because obviously. The UK fits over two and a half times in Texas. It's probably a similar size to Oregon. So I imagine you've guys got about 50 counties and I'd have been in the top, you know, few runners in, in mine. Um, and then so, but never anything national. Um, when I went to like university or college, um, I was mostly playing uh, soccer, or football, uh, just because it was, you know, a more social endeavor and I was away from home and wanting to have a good time, you know, so... Um, so yeah, soccer it was, and I still did the odd like just a bit of running to keep fit. Um, I ran um, like just a couple of marathons in 1997, which obviously was a very long time ago. I think I was the youngest British runner ever to have done the New York Marathon, um, and so I did that again the next year. And um, I didn't do a huge amount of running, but I came back and did Boston in 2006. And in 2012, I moved to Australia and um, they play a bit of soccer over there. But I was in my you know, mid 30s then. And I figured that, hey, you know, so I would be like mouthy and English and I would probably end up getting uh, taught a very harsh physical lesson early on. And 
as you know, we get older, these injuries take a bit longer to come back from. So I joined a track club over there and started running and, you know, training sort of, a, I wouldn't really say training pretty hard, um, but I, you know, so I started to train more than I was and I got, you know, a lot quicker and I eventually sort of um, got this, um, I, I met someone at London Marathon who I used to run with at university and they they absolutely smashed the, their PB and he put me onto a book, which if there's any uh, running geeks out here wanting a good marathon training guide, it's a book by uh, Pete Fitzinger and Scott Douglas called uh, Advanced Marathoning. And that took 14 minutes off my PB down from, I think, 2.41 to 2.27, um, and which was yeah pretty bonkers for me. And That's then bonkers, I thought, Hang yeah. On, I'm, I'm going to use your word. That is yeah. pretty bonkers for me too. Wow. <laughs> And so uh, then, yeah, I was sort of, you know, I, I didn't really get much quicker than that. Um, but I, you know, sort of just sort of enjoyed it. And as you get older, you know, sort of running longer becomes more of a joy. And certainly running quicker is more of a danger, you know, in terms of, you know, putting yourself out for a considerable time. And, yeah, I just fell into uh, this idea and went pretty long. <laughs> I'd say so. Pretty long time. So, um, you, you know, obviously being across the United States and, and coming to our country and, and getting to see places probably that, that I've probably never even seen. And, and again, I've lived here my whole life. But uh, mm -hmm. but is there is there a favorite part of the country that you really kind of resonated with or really fell in love with in a lot of respects? The, the thing is, it depends like on, you know, so you can approach it from a number of different aspects. Like sort of I'm. Um, Currently, I've finally written up my account of the run, and I'm now editing it. So, you know, hopefully, it will see the light of day in print, in print in some form. I hope I and get I, an advanced copy. Just uh, oh, want to put my yeah, name out there. Yeah, copy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm I'm currently writing my way through Texas, and I'm in oil country. And Texas is incredible because when I ran across it, sort of, uh, I ran across it pretty much its widest point, uh, Beaumont to El Paso. So it's 890 miles which is longer than the famed UK long distance run from Land's End to John O'Groats, the two extremes of the uh, country. Um, and you, you, you change from, you know, like the Bayou country almost in Beaumont, you know, and you go through Austin, Houston and Austin, then inside, the, you know, the real like sort of oil country up into the Guadalupes and down into the desert in El Paso. And that was just fascinating to see. Um, you know, I'm a huge U2 fan. So I ran through Joshua Tree National Park and eventually got to Death Valley where the actual Joshua Tree lives. So you, um, you found what you were looking for then? Spot on. <laughs> and, um, you know, eventually uh, that U2 pilgrimage got completed in Chicago. Now, sort of uh, apologies if there's any uh, Vikings or Packers fans here, but, you know, I was Bears from 1985 and um, so I ended up seeing you two in Soldier Field. And so that was like a crazy moment for me. Um, like, I love the Southern hospitality. Um, you know, so when I was in Tennessee, I was pretty much flat broke. And only with like the people I met there, like, so, you know, with the like, so, you know, the handshakes containing $20 that I received in Tennessee, I, you know, got all the way up to Maine without needing to go to another cash point, which is incredible. Uh, and then obviously the rest of the South can't speak highly enough of it. You know, when you got to Maine itself, that was almost like a piece of the South, you know, sort of that was um, just transported up to the far northeast corner. Uh, I love the big cities, even though you're never going to get the human type of engagement that you do when you're not necessarily the biggest ticket in town. Like you, I was when I was going through some of, you know, some of Smallville, America. Um, then like the beautiful Glacier National Park, um, which is also beautifully tragic because when I got there, you know, sort of it was suffering from the same forest fires as Oregon was. Uh, when I made my way, I actually got forced back over the uh, the Columbia into Washington because of those fires on 84. Um, and, you know, when you make that West Coast run, you know, the, the 101 run down to San Francisco, running through the giants of, uh, you know, the tree world, it was unbelievable. Um, you mentioned the pre. Um, that yeah. was super, super special time, not just for the race itself, but just I, I only reached out to the the organizer of the pre saying, hey, guys, I'm 
coming through town and you know i've been trying to get a bit of press but i'm aware that the race is um a little bit sort of you know revered across the world never mind the country um so like do you want me to like postpone my way through or just stay off the radar and they were like no way do you want to run the race and i was like yes so i, so <laughs> I, I didn't know that was i happening. saw you after the race and i did want to come up and, and congratulate you not only on your win uh, but obviously just to maybe get a few more moments with you. And, and I'm, I'm going to be honest, okay? So, so we like transparency on the show, okay? We strive yeah. for that as a host, and, and, as, and obviously we look for guests for that. I'm really mad at you. I'm confessing this right now to my <laughs> listeners and to my executive producer who's off air. You can't hear him, but he's laughing. I'm mad at you because here's the story, my pre-story, if I can jump in. Um, my parents both went to Marshfield High School, same high school as Prefontaine. My yeah. dad was a high jumper uh, when Steve was there. And I dreamed as a child of being a high jumper. And then in middle school, a, a coach nicely told me, son, go be a distance runner. You're never going to be a high jumper. And I was devastated because I thought, well, if I can be a high jumper, maybe just one day my dad will love me because I'll be a high jumper, right? And then uh, fast forward now to you and your situation. You finish the race. They give you an amazing plaque, which rightfully so. You deserve that. You won the race. But they also gave you, I think, and, and of course, correct me if I am wrong here, Rob, but they gave you a Marshfield Pirates cross-country shirt, right? They did. They did. I am so I am mad <laughs> that you have that, and I don't because I've asked and begged and pleaded for one because I want to wear it in honor of my dad and, uh, you know, in honor of the, the, the Marshfield because I, I spent my summers in Coos Bay, uh, that, that sleepy little, you know, fishing town community that, that, that we were in together. Um, I spent my summers there. In fact, the turnaround, at the top of that turnaround, if you can visualize it, there's a cemetery across from that gas station. If you remember, I don't know. You've run yeah. probably so many races. I, no, but, I, I looked but, it up on the map. Yeah. But, but maybe if you remember that. So that's there's a cemetery right across from that. That uh, I think it's a Chevron gas station. Well, then that cemetery, my grandmother is actually buried. And mm -hmm. I did not know that the first year I ran it. And so I, I drove it with my mom and, and we went up there and then we went to the cemetery. Well, as I'm looking across the street, I can see markings on the ground because, you know, we like to do that in America. We like to mark things on the ground, especially during races. Maybe you guys do that over there. I don't know. It's weird in England. I don't know what you do. But anyway. They like it Tour de France for sure. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway. So as I look across the street from, from my grandmother's marker, I see the turnaround. I'm like, this is going to be really emotional coming up this hill. I'm already going to be tired i mean it's a, a roughly i think it's a roughly around the three mile mark and and i'm just like bawling my eyes out as i'm coming up during race day and then i see you as you finish you know obviously was not there when you finished but when i finished you were still kind of <laughs> milling around taking pictures and rightfully so you know you're kind of a celebrity and i see you with the shirt and i'm like are you kidding me this brick comes <laughs> steals our trophy takes my shirt <laughs> Yeah, I was really mad. So I'm confessing to you now. Please forgive me for my anger and, and not hatred, because there was never hatred, yeah. <laughs> just anger towards you. So please forgive me for that. Well, I'll make it slightly worse before I make it better, but I will make it better, I promise. And so the the Marshfield top was like literally incredible, and you'll find out why how incredible later on. Uh, but on that day as well, I also go across the line and um, and it was obviously a Roadrunners Association of America race. Uh, and then they went, congratulations, you're Oregon State champion. And I was like, you know, I'm not from Oregon. And they went, it's an open race. It doesn't matter. So I've also got a, a, a medal from uh, saying I'm Oregon State champion or I was. But I think it's a lifelong honor. I certainly will wear it like a lifelong honor. Well, um, now we're not going to be friends anymore. So, that. <laughs> but at least that at least it proves that sort of the, the the Marshfield top sort of went to a you know a good home and to, as a, it didn't as a go to a good was... home. It didn't yeah. go to a good home. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I I am I am so excited that that you that one you were able to come and and two to be a part of that race to me you know the pre aspect of it is huge for me obviously but the grandmother aspect has a has an equal footing I would say. But, but I like what you were saying as far as the generosity of America. As an American citizen, that makes me feel kind of good and, and honestly yeah. really good 
that people were looking out for you. People were watching out for you. People were, you know, hey, here's 20 bucks. Hey, let me buy you, you know, dinner today. Maybe that happened. Maybe it didn't. But, but to me, that kind of instills in me that we're still okay as Americans on some level. So, well, so I, I loved hearing that. On, on, the, on the big thing and sort of like, this is definitely not a political statement. I'm sort of talking more about the, uh, the fact that there's a lot of sloganism in this world and stuff. And, you know, obviously one of the most famous slogans at the moment is make America great again. And that really makes me mad. And, I'm, you know, I'm not mad at sort of one side for picking it because, to be honest, if the other side had heard, thought of it first, they probably would have used it. It was the fact that that slogan implies that America isn't great that mm. really gets my goat. And it's not make America great again. It's stop America becoming rubbish. That's all you need to do. Because yeah. as long as the people are, are there, you know, sort of, uh, of course there's, there's bad people as well as sure. good people, but there are. Yeah. I could name you the three bad people in inverted commas that I met on the run and if I met less than 3,000 people I would be surprised and so you know you're talking about 0.1% of a bad egg and I think that's a pretty good ratio that's, that's pretty um, awesome to hear. So pe- yeah yeah, well, people are incredible. Like, sort of, one of the, the last bits of generosity that sort of happened was um, I was uh, running through, um, I think it was coming out of Gallup in New Mexico, um, so just approaching the um, you know the Arizona border, and it was a pretty miserable day. I've, I've got a knack of running through places when they're experiencing atypical weather, and, you know, to be honest, if you're in the Arizona border, you would take rain over 100-degree heat. And a, a lady comes and says, do you need a ride? And I'm like, no, no, I'm OK, thank you. I'm running across America, but cheers for asking. And that happened all the time, you know. And so as you were saying, people buy you dinner. The amount of times I'd leave a diner and say, you know, uh, what's the uh, what's the check? And they said, oh, the guy who's just left has paid for you. Don't worry about it. And so, you know, that happened all the time. But uh, this lady came back. And first of all, she had an umbrella um, which I couldn't carry because it was just extra weight. Uh, but she also gave me her whole savings, a whole penny jar, and said, take this. And so I had a feeling from a car that she, you know, wasn't very rich or anything like that. And so fortunately I had the excuse of it being very heavy that I couldn't take it, you know, and so I didn't need to make oh. her feel awkward. I just thought oh, it's too heavy. I'm sorry. She drives up the road and I see her turn left into, you know, what turned out to be a hugely dilapidated trailer park. And she blatantly couldn't spare that money, but she just thought, no, this guy definitely needs it. And so I just hope that sort of, you know, even I I hope I smiled enough that she knew how much I appreciated it. And I was just grateful for having a good excuse not to, you know, judge her on the oh you can't afford that you know and um yeah. but you know that, that that one always sort of strikes me and there was sort of you know just so many good tales and i i just sort of hope that if um a publisher sort of ever does get hold of this book um they all tell as many of these as possible because i know as we see from the news a lot bad news sells and of course i've written about the bad encounters that i had and I really hope that when they divvy them up, you know, it's not like sort of, you know, they don't make it 50-50 and go, why have you not reported these other 300 <laughs> unbelievable acts, you know? Um, I, th- I think you'll find a publisher, and, and I hope you do, and, and we'll, uh, we'll definitely uh, pray that that happens for sure because I think your story geez. needs to be told, and, and that's part of the reason why I was so excited that we finally got to connect is <laughs> that, and again, as I'm – preparing to do a podcast almost a year ago now i'm like brainstorming names people i've encountered through my life who have maybe touched it or have impacted it and who i feel can do the same for others and 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 rob i say this and and it's it, it is meant to be very sincere you were right at the top of the list and I thought, how the heck am I ever going to connect with this guy? I, I don't even know really how to find him. And thank you, social media. And thank you, <laughs> just, just email. Just walk the street and, and, you know, and, 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 like and maybe that's it. And so I'm glad. I'm so happy that we got to do this. So, so we've talked about some positive stuff. We've talked about, obviously, some interaction and, and things like that. But I'm curious as a runner because I've, I've been there. I've been here. I have been here myself. Loneliest part of the journey for you. What was that? Uh, oh, it was it was quite tough. Um, 
on the fourth leg uh, because for about 50 percent in the, the fourth journey, leg was... help us out with that What's, what was the fourth yeah, leg again so i encountered you well the pre-race was the very it was actually probably the first day of the um of the well the third leg was a strange one i finished abandon um because nobody knows where forest hit the ocean for a third time you know you can work it out and i thought abandon looked cool and i it is, i like this cool yeah well, I like the symmetry with the arch where it says, welcome to Bandon. And it's almost like the arch on the pier in Santa Monica. And so that was great. Um, and I got there on September the 15th. Uh, I set off on September the 15th. So as far as I'm aware, that was the day that I became the first person to ever run across America three times in a year. So that was cool. And then I had this race the next day, which I intended to run reasonably quickly as a mark of respect for pre but not the silliness that happened. But anyway, I digress. I went down the West Coast and got to San Francisco. Um, and then I was to set off again now. About 50% of the race I was supported um, by my girlfriend. We bought an old RV because we figured, hey, it's the most cost way, cost-effective way of doing it. We could sell the RV at the end and hopefully get a lot of our money back because it was an old one. And... Um, Nadine had to go back because when we were in Minnesota in the middle of nowhere, a place called Fergus Falls, uh, she tells me that she's expecting our first child. And so, um, so she had to go home. Thank you very much, Alex. So I don't know if you could hear it, but uh, I... Baby B was just recently trying to squeeze in through the door when yes. I'm doing this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen pictures of her um, online. She's adorable. And, she's and your, your wizard outfit that you were wearing in, yes. in one of the pictures. <laughs> Uh, if you've got was, this beard, you may as well make use of yeah, it. Yeah, I was just going to say, you look like Gan You pull off a great Gandalf, so there we are. So, <laughs> so worst part of the trip. I, I took you off track, sorry. Yeah, so um, so she has to go home, and uh, my friend Olivia um, takes over the reins of Jenny because, of course, you have to name your boat, and there was never a better name for a boat than Jenny. Um, and we're in Ely, Nevada, which I never thought was actually one of the coldest places in America, but it officially is. Um, and as we were driving north towards Salt Lake, uh, a chap was coming the opposite way to us, and um, he was he was heading on his way to Vegas. And as we make a turn, I'm running at this time. Olivia's driving. Uh, he smashes into the RV. Uh, everybody's okay, but the RV is you know totaled, and so towed away and so olivia like unbelievably generously because uh, i said right let's go and sort this out and she was like no you need to go on and i had my uh, stroller uh, which i called pram solo because again with the beard i bear more than a striking resemblance to chewbacca um and so i headed off with the stroller and got to salt lake met some incredible people like a guy who was a witness at the crash um he knew someone who worked in the casino in wendover and when I got there, I had a room for the night, which is just unbelievable. Um, but then after Utah, you get to Wyoming and um, there was literally nothing. I was running along I-80 and there's, you know, overly, uh, sorry, only even like a gas station or a town, like every 40 miles. And so I'd have to like, you know, have everything and then hit each place. And I was just, I, I saw the snow defences, you know, braced against the, you know, sort of the winter is coming. And um, I, I started to get really, really cold there. And I'm thinking there's no way I can get across because I was heading towards Buford in South Carolina at this point. And I was starting to get a lot of uh, injury problems at this point in time, like around my pelvis. And um that was pretty rough you know so i i camped for the last time in wyoming i had a couple of like um i say sub-zero this is like um european british sub-zero so yeah below 30 anyway nights um and the camping was great it was a lot of fun but the next morning when you were packing up and you couldn't feel your fingers even through gloves and you were saying i don't want to do this tonight but you knew that's most likely what you were going to be doing that was one of the times where I had to really, you know, focus on, on moving forward. Well, in leading into that, I, I'm curious, like mile after mile, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, how many miles would you run on average a day? The average over the whole trip was 37. Um, okay. And so like, like my, my shortest days, like so about, um, we usually when I had an injury or something like that, so it was about eight or nine miles. Okay. Uh, and the biggest, uh, when I was running to New Raymer in Colorado, uh, that finished up uh, at a cafe 
that I thought was closed, but it turned out to be a bar full of like sort of imagine like like a Midwest version of Cheers. It was just incredible. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so that after a sixty-two mile night, the uh, the six or more beers that I had were uh, well, they were good for calories, but maybe not so much for uh, recovery. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so mile after mile, I mean, what kept you going? How did you persevere through that? Uh, obviously, sort of, you had the big goal. Um, you know, when I started, my only goal was to get to Santa Monica because then I could say I've run across the country. And, um, you know, after that, sort of, it was just a case of going as far as I could. And so a few people, like, you know, really close to me, everybody knew I was doing a Forrest Gump thing. But to be honest, anybody with... Uh, a crazy running story has probably been labeled Forrest Gump or especially if they've got a beard, you know? Um, so, but I knew that I wanted to go across five times and end up at that place in Monument Valley. Um, but I didn't really want to think about it because it was so far away. And of course, when you got to an ocean turning around to go to another ocean, um, it looks like the, the room defenses have been breached by baby B. She's coming in. Um, and, um, hello, little one. <laughs> yeah i'm just telling a very lovely gentleman in america about what kept me going now eventually the thought of baby b would keep me going but i didn't know about her at the start and so my goals would be a lot more um short term which would either be getting to an ocean getting across a state uh or getting to a you know cool place like you know how could you not be excited about uh running past um, something like uh, the start of the Boston Marathon, you know, that that's that's a pretty incredible, you know, sort of thing to have in your sights. Um, but a lot of the times it was just focusing on getting to the end of the day and then sometimes it was just getting to the end of each individual run, you know, and I'd, I'd always eat something at the end of a run, so there's always something tangible to focus on. Uh, and if it was something like a donut store, you know, all these ultra runners have crazy... Uh, Run, you know, running nicknames, don't you? Like the peacock or the mountain goat. Well, I this is official. This is the announcing of the fact that I want to be known as the Donut King from now on. <laughs> so you've well, heard well, that there first. We'll officially uh, tweet that out later. So yeah, tweet, tweet, tweet it to Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, hopefully and, they're um, listening. So, but but that's yeah, great, well, man. I, I mean, because, because again, I'm, I'm thinking of like there's probably some long miles, some long days, right? But you kept yeah. putting the shoes on, kept lacing them up, kept going forward. Well, like sort of uh, the the long straight roads were actually great because you could um, you could just either drift off, you know, you could either look at the scenery around you, uh, even in somewhere like Kansas where you know you go, what? It's just cornfields. Um, when you're moving at a really slow pace, there's there's a lot of beauty in everything, you know, and you know, so on the short small scale, you'll notice like little bits of wildlife. Um, as you retreated further north, a lot of that wildlife would be thankfully alive and not squished on a road. Um, and then, you know, you'd still get these encounters with people that would provide unexpected boosts as you were going along. The really tough miles were actually in sort of medium sized towns I'd ne necessarily not heard that much of in you know sort of in my geography classes um where you know you'd have to be on and off sidewalks or there'd be no cycle lane and you'd have to be apologizing to traffic the whole time you know and so that was just the sort of thing that stressed you out you know it wasn't anybody being horrible to you it was just an underlying level of stress and you know when you get to the city limits you'd feel yourself relax a bit you know you'd, you'd look forward to this place because you knew it'd have amenities and then by the time you finished you were just glad to be out in the wide open spaces again but uh, every morning was tough like people say did you ever feel like quitting and i just go every morning and then we have a little laugh and then so i just go no seriously every morning <laughs> Yeah, that, that's my uh, question. Because... I mean, I would have, I don't know where I would have quit, but I, I might have along the way. I also noticed, too, in, in a lot of your shots, action shots, so so you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, uh, you're on Instagram, you're on all those social medias, and, and we'll get to that uh, maybe just in a little bit. But, but I also noticed, as a runner, I'm wearing headphones. Like, I cannot run. I cannot even, even if I'm just going for a mile, headphones are in. I'm jamming to something. You're not listening <laughs> to any music. Why? I'm dying ah, the, to know the, this. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, if you've caught me on a morning um, photo, because I probably was more keen to take photos in the morning when I was fresh, 
Um, and I never like to have earphones in on the first run of the day because I'd break this, let's just say, 40 miles for, for easy maths. And I would uh, break that down into four, 10 miles or five, eight miles, depending on where the lay of the land was. And the first run of the day, I'd never actually listened to music because it was usually before nature hadn't started to retreat from, you know, cars. And the, so, you know, it was still out and about. And that was a pretty special time. Um, but I actually quite a lot of the time, like music was massive for me and you probably didn't catch the headphones because I, i'm not one for big cans i'm i'm in ear ones and um and sort of yeah under my hair it would just disappear and sometimes i'd run the cable down my shirt to stop it slapping about you know some um, undercover music man <laughs> so so you do have headphones okay so yeah, I, that's, yeah. I just wanted to clear the air on that so well, at, at some point i've recently uh completed a um a like I had a song of the day every single day and I recently just completed the whole from start to finish, you know, a song of the day list. And so as a little treat for you, if you call any day from day one to day 422, I'll tell you what the song of the day was. Wow. Really? Yeah, because I've got it right in front of me on the on this little. Uh, so, I'll so actually go March, up. go March tenth. What what day would have that? Were you running March, in March on on the tenth? Yeah, I, I could give you that on twenty seventeen, which would have been. Okay. Hang on. Where are we? Where's March the tenth? I would have been in Arkansas, and the song was "Somebody to Love" by Queen. <laughs> are you kidding? All right, I got one more there for you. you. Go. I got one more for which, you. Which, uh, yeah, go for it. Uh, August, uh, August 18th. August the 18th. It's my, okay. it's my wedding anniversary, so make it a good one. Right. So this is almost unbelievable. The last one was great because somebody that, to That last one is great. No, don't get me wrong. Well, Freddie's amazing. If, if, if you're on your own and nobody can hear you okay. and you're out running, sing Somebody to Love. It's the most liberating thing Absolutely. in the world. Absolutely. Totally agree. I'm going to do that tonight so, when no one's home. Maybe. You've got a great one here because I was actually in Cup Bank in Montana. Okay. And it was the the area where, you know, when you see Forrest Gump running through the the, the wheat fields or the, you know, the, the corn fields, whatever yeah. they are. yeah. Um, and so that's from the scene. And the song was by Jackson Brown and is running on empty from the actual <laughs> soundtrack. So you, you've picked an absolute peach there. I have indeed. Uh, that's fantastic that you had a song of the day. That that to me was that was worth the yeah. price of admission. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll kind of wrap up. I have a couple more questions I want to wrap up with. But uh, best food you had? What was that? Hands down, best food you ever had? Uh, on the journey, of course. Probably hard to narrow it down, but if you had to pick one. Yeah, it is. Like, sort of, uh, best pizza I had was in uh, Minneapolis. Uh, the best donuts I had, I've got three. One from Cookville, Tennessee. Uh, one from the Sweetwater Donut Mill in Wisconsin. And the other one was from your own Voodoo Donuts in Portland. There you go. So, Voodoo, uh, yeah. Voodoo Donuts made the list. That's awesome. Being a donut guy. <laughs> Being the king. Donut king. Forgive me. Exactly. I didn't even call you by your right title. Donut king. <laughs> Down with you. You'll yes. be first against the wall. Yes. You know? There we go. Uh, in, in honor the of most, the king. Yeah. The most unbelievable thing, though, was in a tiny little town called Kirby in Arkansas. And they had a lemonade pie at the diner in Kirby. And I don't even know what it is. I think it was literally, it, it's its from another planet. It's always directly beamed down from heaven. I don't know what this thing was, but it was incredible. Kirby, Arkansas, lemonade pie. We'll look that one up. Maybe we'll give them yeah. some love uh, in our show notes. So uh, how has this changed your view on people, this journey? Uh, it sort of you know, changes the view on not just sort of other people, but myself, sort of myself. You know, we'll come to that sort of maybe in a bit. You know, but um, it's I, I've certainly had it confirmed that inherently people want to help other people. Uh, you know, even the miserable people that I met, they probably you know I'm going to write it off as them having a bad day. But you know, at the moment, there's a lot of like pitting sides against each other, and there doesn't seem to be much compromise or you know sort of a you know you know wish to agree. But everybody wants to be helped and to help people, and I just saw that on occasion. So from now, if I ever see someone who's you know 
giving me grief and stuff like that, I'll try to understand why they're doing that rather than just think, you know, sort of, I don't know if I can sort of cuss on this show, but what an a-hole, you know? But, you know, just think, well, why, why why, are they doing that? You know, you don't know, like, sort of, you know, the other half may have left them that day or something. So see the good in other people because it's always there somewhere. So so with that, is there anyone that gives you kind of any inspiration that, that keeps you going forward? I mean, is there any higher purpose? Or I mean, because, again, there are some lonely miles out there. Yeah, the thing the thing is that it is like sort of um, you know like my surname is Pope, and so I'm a I'm a Roman Catholic by trade. Uh, I would probably say I'm a lapsed Catholic in in all honesty. Um, but like sort of, I've always sort of had a you know sort of a, a definite relationship with faith. It's sort of more of a, a personal thing. You know, I don't go to church anymore, but I do sort of you know pray and not just basically when I'm about to be wiped out by an 18 rig sort of a truck, you know. Um, and occasionally some people would like, uh, you know, stop me on the road and say, do you mind if I pray for you? And, you know, sort of, um, obviously some people might find that a bit weird in the UK because it's not sort of a, a sort of as godly a country as America. But I sort of got a lot of comfort from that. And even though sort of I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily um, say to them, you know, sort of, oh, you know, this is sort of my personal relationship with God and anything like that. But I would then, you know, if they said as I left, I was like, God bless you. I'd be like, yeah, I felt something there, you know, and I, you know, I'd say, I'd say, you know, God bless you too. And, and it was great. And both of us would go away from that conversation, I think, feeling a little bit, you know, strengthened and, um, you know, any sort of little bits. Cause I, I put sort of, you know, people have different, what does the big guy look like? Is he a big beardy guy? You know, me in 50 years time, sort of up in the sky. Um, but I just sort of think that he represents something that's in all of us really, which is the fact that just being, doing things for the, you know, for the sake of doing good, you know, sort of, and just doing something, not because it benefits you, but because it's the right thing to do. And having a little, principle that you will stick to like that is just really important and um yeah i was glad of that a lot of people in the states having that <laughs> that's awesome i appreciate you sharing that that's awesome i really liked a, a lot of what you said especially people praying for you i mean that's that's pretty yeah. cool that's pretty awesome um yeah i'd say that I think about five times and every time it was cool you know the like it sort of at the, it surprised me at the start uh because i was just like oh okay okay uh, let's do this <laughs> You know, at the end, I just go, yeah, thank you very much. You know, so that when when you know, someone's taking the time to do that, that's great. Uh, so I want to I want to ask you one more question, uh, get a quote in, and then uh, we're gonna play a game together. So so here's here's the question, <laughs> then we'll go with the quote. So uh, maybe there's one thing, maybe there's a couple of things, but but what's one thing that you learned about yourself through this journey? Um, the you you can pretty much achieve anything you want. I know that sounds really corny, and people just go, "Well, there's no way, sort of, I can run a four minute mile now. I'm in my fifties. Well, maybe so, but like, sort of, you can still achieve your personal sort of best as a result. You know, you can still push yourself further. But I found that within you, there's a um, there's an inner reserve, and I I actually call this my tough boss. And so whenever I was ever struggling to get up or go somewhere in the morning, I would just think, hey, you're not just going to call work up and say, I'm not going in. Why? Because your tough boss will literally, you know, <laughs> it'll sack you on the spot. And so I found that like by almost sort of externalizing my troubles, I could, you know, I could deal with them a lot sort of easier. I would always make my troubles be work. And then I would just go, right, no, you can get on with that. And so breaking things down to small segments is massive and just sort of deal with whatever's in front of you at that point in time. Don't get too bogged down. That's a great answer, Rob. I like that a lot. Okay. So yes. I came, I came across this quote. Uh, you can guess who said it, but, but, but maybe not, but uh, here it is. Uh, he who's not courageous enough to risk will accomplish nothing in their life. Do you know who said that first? I mean, there's tons of people out in the world, but 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 who do you think that's who said that? I don't know. Certainly, pretty profound. <laughs> pretty profound. Uh, okay. So, I, what what I comes wish... to mind when you hear that? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell well, you. It was Muhammad Ali. 
pre- well, I was gonna, I was gonna say it sounded pretty presidential, and so it's not presidential, but su- surely the king there, you know. So it's a, uh, yeah, it, like sort of, um, th- there were a lot of sort of um, great moments of philosophy, like sort of. I always felt pretty, pretty special whenever I ran down a uh, like Martin Luther King Boulevard, you know. Sort of, um, I also found it was actually quite sad that someone who is such a beacon of inspiration. Um, you know, they'd put the Martin Luther King Boulevard and then not make it like the place where all the best libraries and art galleries were. And when I got to Cleveland and they finally had done that, and it was the most beautiful street, you know, with the Natural History Museum, I was just like, right, Cleveland's got it right. <laughs> well, I, I, I like that quote, but um but since it's since it's a pre quote, we could we could say this to give anything less than your best is to sacrifice, sacrifice the gift. gift. You know that one, I know you know that one. I nearly let the guy in second win that race yeah, because I knew he was a local guy and it would mean a lot to him. But then I thought Pre would Pre would not be happy if I if I if I didn't give my best. And so going back to that Marshfield top because I, I can't leave you sort of you know still having that. When you, you um, no, I'm I'm thinking about yeah, it right now I, as you bring it up. It's bringing up sore but, subject but, right but, now. But, but, when when you see me running the final miles so down uh, Monument Valley and you see me wearing that long sort of, you know, rain mac and the cap and the jogging bottoms and the black top, uh, I was actually wearing two coats to make it look like Forest Swan. Uh, and it was around sort of 80, 90 degrees. So you can imagine how hot I was. That black top I was wearing was the Marshfield top turned back to front because Forrest wears a black top in the in the film and I just thought I need to have this Marshfield. It's been so such an important part of the run. I wanted to wear it for the end, and I just thought so. I ran the marathon to the end wearing the Marshfield top the right way round, and then for the final bit, it was still on. I'm gonna let that go, but you know it's gonna take a minute. <laughs> if you know me personally, I have a hard time letting things go sometimes. Rob, uh, it has been a great privilege and joy just to sit with you. Um, I'm I I cannot wait for the book. Um, I will pay for a copy of the book. Um, <laughs> I, I I'm just so excited to read your stories, to hear more of your stories. Uh, I'm excited about your family. I'm excited that everybody made it home safe. Uh, I'm excited that that you know you're you're taking this story and you're really changing lives with it. And I think that that is what we're supposed to do. And I think you're really honoring your mom's you know, memory and, and obviously her wishes, her Yoda request, as you kind of alluded to, which I liked as well. I resonated with that as well. So, so we're going to play a game. This game is called senseless. And so, uh, Garrett, our executive producer is off air. Um, he's going to roll the dice on your behalf because obviously you're not here (laughs) to roll. So he is, or I'm going to roll or Garrett's going to roll. Garrett will roll. There we go. So you rolled a number two, which is uh, who is touching your life right now? Now, senseless, we take the senses and we kind of put them on a dice and give them a a number, and number six is the wild card. But uh, but who is touching your life right now? Uh, My baby. And I wasn't sort of ever a very child-friendly person, uh, and I was always like... So my advice to people now, if they're still umming and ahhing about whether they're going to have one, is it's better than you think it's going to be. (laughs) What advice would you give to new parents? Uh, just uh, don't wish away the days. It's cool that, you know, when they start doing things like walking and, you know, and starting to say words, but don't wish away the brilliant things that are happening right now. Just like with the forest, live in the present. Okay, last question, because I'm dying to know this. How many times have you seen the movie Forrest Gump? I would say all the way through, I'm comfortably in double figures, but um, I, I've seen the running scene probably around 200 plus, just because for accuracy sets. <laughs> and, and have you ever met Tom Hanks? I haven't. Unfortunately, the day I finished was his 30th wedding anniversary, so I've, I've certainly forgiven for that. You know, he probably had a more pressing engagement. <laughs> well, you got engaged that same day, right? I did indeed, yeah. Yeah, that was a great shot. Yeah, I actually it followed. Must have inspired me. I actually followed your journey after we ran into each other. I did follow your journey uh, through social media and and kind of stayed up to date on on where you were. I just, again, man, I I I say this 
as a compliment. And I hope it comes across that way, man. I almost <laughs> look at you as a running role model. Like one day, maybe just maybe I can get a wild hair like you did and do this crazy journey. Maybe not quite as journey as you are, but, uh, but to continue to run and, you know, to continue to, to, I liked what you said. What was a mean boss? I need to find that tough mean boss. The tough boss. Excuse me. Thank <laughs> yeah. you for the correction. I need to find that tough boss inside of me to, to make me get out and run more because I definitely need to do a lot more of that. So with that, uh, Rob, plug your stuff. Where are you at? I know there's a website. I know there's uh, social media. So go ahead and do that for us. And then, uh, and then we'll kind of wrap up with one final thought. So yeah, my website is goingthedistancerun.com. That's goingthedistancerun.com. And I, gives you a link to all my social medias uh, which is run rob la run r-o-b-l-a uh, and on that website by the way you can still donate to the two charities if you so wish so that would be lovely <laughs> that's awesome I, I appreciate that too and uh rob again i just want to say thank you so much for giving us some time by the way what time is it in england currently it is six minutes past seven at night. Okay, so we're at 11.06 here, the time of this recording, and so people can do the math on that, that this is now into your evening time. So uh, with that, Rob, again, thank you so much. I, I wish you all the best with your family, with your marriage, and, and love that uh, daughter of yours. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's the, the most uh, amazing part of life. So we'll kind of end with this. There we go. There it is. There's our music as we get out of here. Uh, again, I want to thank my guest, Rob, so much. The man who made the journey that I think few have taken. And that's that journey across the United States, Forrest Gump style. So, uh, again, thank you so much to Rob. Thank you for giving us some moments today. And, again, this is Other People's Shoes. I hope you liked today's episode. I hope you stay tuned for next week because we're going to have some uh, excitement there, too. Uh, again, just remember, when you walk in other people's shoes, you really do get a different perspective on life. Of course, I'm your host, Neil Matthews. we got a Garrett executive producer offset. But uh, again, thank you, Rob, so much. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us on Other People's Shoes. Of course, I'm your host, Neil Matthews. I'm so excited to bring that episode to you today. Rob has an incredible story, and I think it is one that is going to have a ripple effect in my life for a long time. Hopefully, you will as well. What was your greatest takeaway? Mine, of course, was when he was telling about the story of the woman in New Mexico, giving him some change and an umbrella. That was powerful. I'm so excited to announce we are doing a giveaway for the month of October. That's right. We're going to be giving away a signed copy of Escaping the Rabbit Hole, My Journey Through Depression with a past guest, Tracy Maxfield. Here's Tracy to tell you a little bit more about it. Hi, I'm Tracy Maxfield, and I was on podcast Other People's Shoes a couple of weeks ago talking about depression and my journey from the rabbit hole. In fact, I wrote a book, Escaping the Rabbit Hole, My Journey Through Depression. I have given a signed copy of my book that they can give away. I hope you enjoy my book. Thank you, Tracy, so much. If you'd like to be a part of that giveaway, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is like us on Facebook, comment below on why you want the copy of the book, and of course, follow us on Instagram. You can do that there under the hashtag escaping the rabbit hole, and we will enter you into the contest. Of course, you can also tweet us at people's shoes under the hashtag escaping the rabbit hole, and uh, just tell us why you'd like a copy of the book, and uh, we will enter you into our drawing. Of course, we will announce the winner on Facebook Live on the last Friday of October. October. I hope you'll stay with us next Wednesday as we try on another pair of shoes with a good friend of mine from the great state of Georgia. Well, who am I referring to? Well, his name's Mitch, and Mitch is going to tell you his incredible story next week. So hopefully you can come be a part of that next Wednesday. If you'd like to like us on Facebook, that can be done at Other People's Shoes under Facebook. We're also on Instagram. You can follow us there under OPS Podcast Show. And of course, you can tweet us at People's Shoes. Until then, I'm your host, Neil Matthews. Thank you so much.